Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled uh, meeting of the Sunderland Board of Awesome. We're going to have a classification hearing tonight with our trusted friends and uh, compatriots, the assessors. Uh, we have a handful of announcements to make specific to oh, updates for 120, updates for town administrator hiring, town administrator hiring process, uh, a couple of requests uh, for grants to sign, and... Basically, that's it. Anyway, so we're going to start off right off the bat with a classification hearing. And we're starting that with uh, Teresa and the team of assessors who have worked diligently all year to make sure that we're ready to go tonight. Take it away. All right. <clears throat> so here we are at the fiscal year 2020 classification hearing. And every year I try to put a different photo. So here we are with the old library so what is the purpose of the classification hearing well it allows a shift in the tax burden between property classes this does not change the total tax levy for the community it simply determines the share to be borne by each class so shifting the burden the share of the levy for the commercial industrial and personal property classes otherwise known as cip may be increased by up to 50 percent if the residential and open space classes raise at least 65 percent of what they would have raised without the shift So overview of the process. Every five years, assessments must be at 100% fair market value, certified and audited by Mass Department of Revenue. This was changed, it used to be every three years, but it was ch changed by the Municipal Modernization Act of 2016, signed by Governor Baker. So that increased it to five years. So our next reval is tentatively set for 2022. So every year, uh, we must make interim adjustments to be at the 100% fair market value and certified. So here we have our classes. We have residential, uh, and then we have commercial, industrial, and personal property. So here is our spreadsheet uh, breaking down the facts and figures showing fiscal 19 and fiscal 20. So basically, all the values went up across the board. The biggest change was in personal property uh, because of the NSTAR solar facility. That went up quite a bit. That was a big uh, value. So basically, if you break it down, 88.75% of our tax base is residential. <clears throat> and then the remaining CIP uh, is only 11.23. So then we have our amounts to be raised. Um, the amount to be raised is up 4.9%. Uh, the amount from other sources is up 3.71%, which the previous year we were down by like 6%. And so the tax levy is also up 4.35%. But to be noted, uh, the other sources money was increased due to increases in the stabilization fund, free cash, local receipts, and state aid. So last year's uh, fiscal 19 rate was 1533. The proposed 20 rate is 1544. So it did not go up as much as we initially thought. So now we have impact of splitting the rate. So what we have here, are, this is a simple average. I just took the total value for each class divided by the amount of properties. So we have our average residential, commercial, and an industrial. And then we show what the rates would be um, right in here with the regular 100% rate for both classes. And then you can see what happens at the 90% shift, the 85% shift, the 80% shift, and the 75% shift. And the rates go up astronomically for the CIP classes, which would be very unfair with its town of our size. Because most towns that have a split rate have some kind of, a lot of them have a, a utility to offset. So it's a big value in those classes, and we just don't have it. Most small towns don't. It's only 30% of the towns in the state hmm. or the Commonwealth have a split rate. They either have a big utility or they have a large commercial base, and we don't have either. Yeah, neither one of those. <clears throat> right. So in summary, uh, the average residential value in fiscal 19 was 290354 and the taxes were... Oh, I got skewed. Uh, four, four, five, one, three, three, and then the values went up 
in 2020, but the bottom line is it's an increase of like 166.87. So our values went up across the board, 3.62. The amount to be raised went up 4.35, and the proposed tax increase is only 0.72%. Hmm. And why did the taxes not go up more? Because originally we thought the rate would go up more. It's because we had an increase of $20,000 in new growth. And just in case somebody doesn't know what new growth is, it's the increase in valuation over prior year due to construction activity. So some of that is new homes, but it's also because of NSTAR as well. And the cherry sheet estimates were up $10,000, which was a good thing. Uh, we did increase our property values due to sales because that's how we calculate everything. It's all on the sales approach. And the local estimated receipts were higher because of growth. So it didn't end up being as bad as we all thought it was going to be. So now this um, bar graph just shows how much personal property went up over the previous year, and that also is because of NSTAR. And so that's the gray bar. And then the residential class, you can see, has just steadily been increasing over the last five years, a little bit every year, because sales are high, and so they just keep going up a little bit. But it's nothing astronomical. It's just the big jump was that personal property because of NSTAR. And for those watching at home, the NSTAR is the solar installation over by Bubs, in case people are wondering what that is. Right. And so then this is just uh, showing the 25-year history of tax rates. So here we are at our proposed rate of 1544, and the water district is going to remain the same at 55. So if you look back over time, we've had much higher tax rates in the past. Yep. Especially if we go back to 99. Yep, so I did 25 years, so if you look back, even in 96, 97, 98, 99, 2000, 2001, they were all higher than what we have now. So it was higher, it went down, and then it's been going back up. So in summary, the uh, Board of Assessors recommend a single tax rate because it just doesn't make sense for a town or a size. And it's dramatic, it's changed since the last year, so. No, nope. same. Okay. First of all, thanks for the, the handout and the presentation. It, it adds uh, context. We've had years past where we simply talk about base valuations, townwide valuations. You know, just, just spreading it out across the way. This this uh, gives it something, uh, some uh, meat on those bones, and that's a good thing. Thank you so much for that. Comments from the board. No, I don't have any. But, you know, like I said, it's a pretty much the status quo from mm -hmm. previous years, so. We just, had, we just had a really good new growth year, but um, yep, next year nice. could prove to be a good year as well with the new complex. Right. Yep, that's true. So that remains to be seen what everything else. And how the real estate it, market pans out yeah, over the yep. course of the year, too. Which it's pretty much, you know, values are staying high. Yeah, because people, down. it's all relative where people come from. Right. Some people think, you know, something <laughs> that we might think is high is a bargain to them. It all depends on what they're used to. Sure. So a lot of things, and that's what drives it, and that's what people don't understand. Mm -hmm. It's all about the sales. Yep. Now, this is the assessed value. This is nothing, not, not uh, excuse me, this is the assessed value. And when we get to budgeting, we also have passed a debt exclusion mm -hmm. not included in this, correct? No, everything is. Everything is. Everything is included in there. So, even with those extra monies, the rate still didn't go that high. And that—that that was the first thing I questioned Brian, the accountant. Mm -hmm. Why did it not go higher? Not that we wanted to go higher, but sure, right. But, but you thought. Well, it offs. We had things that were more incoming than we expected okay. because everything's estimated. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So that was a that that worked out. Nice. You know, that's why I said we had. 20,000 higher in new growth than last year's new growth, and 10,000 more in the cherry sheet. So there's 30,000 right there. And then the same thing with the estimated. You know, it's just everything came in more in our favor. So it kind of offset the extra money we needed Has to raise. Raised, right? Yeah, so that was a very good thing. 
Makes me wonder the flip side of that coin will be when's our time up for a little readjustment yeah, in the school. Back, yeah, I hear you totally get that. <laughs> Good point, David. Well, your values are up now and everything, so you can pay more. Your ability to pay. Yeah, that's right, okay. is increased. Tom, any comments, questions? Well, when you look well, when you look at the numbers, mm -hmm. you start at 2008, uh, rates went up 4 cents, 56 cents, 14, 17, 45, 55, 33, 35, 66. 33 and this year 11 cents. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, 11 cents. Thinking about that, where we are in the curve, that it, it, uh, flattens it out a little bit based on the prior decade. Yeah. Yeah. We, we had estimated that it might be higher, but mm -hmm. we had those things to offset it. So, nice. But I, I, I do know that, I do know that rate is just one, you know, people's assessed values are going up and, Yep. And, but I, I would say, you know, when we look at our the tax rate, the tax rate is pretty stable. Mm -hmm. That's Overall. a good way to describe it, yep. And still one of the lowest ones in it is. the valley. Or not the valley, but the, the county area. The mm -hmm. county, yeah. Thank you, Teresa. You're welcome. Okay, so... This is a this is a classification hearing. Any questions from the audience about classification? Editor, director, nothing, nothing. We're all good. <laughs> okay. So if, if there's no public comment, no more comment from the board, accept the motion to accept the recommendation from the assessors to set a rate of fifteen forty four for the fiscal year twenty twenty. Motion. Um, first, I think we need to we have to discuss if we want to uh, have a split tax. Okay. Right. Yep. We should. We should, we should at least on. do that. We should, yep. Sure. We should vote on that. We need to vote on So the, the first motion then, based on that, is first of all discussion about having a split rate. And I'll turn the light on. Actually, he's going to do it. Oh, thank you. So we're we're not we're not driven by that thirty percent threshold, which we, which is good. I, I Mr. Chair, yep. I, I I thank Teresa for putting numbers down because, I mean, sometimes I mean. It's it's easy to for people to say, well, we should shift we should shift our tax right the the tax burden onto commercial because we're allowed to yep um, and we and, and we have had that discussion many years but I think um, when when Teresa actually puts the numbers in front of it and see how and you would be affecting a very small right. group yep. of rate payers I, I I don't think it's and those rate payers are typically using the lesser amount of our services. Fair. I I personally do 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 not. I wouldn't support a split split rate, Mr. Chair. Dave, what do you think? Yeah, I, I agree. And there's nothing that's happened to change, you know, past. Uh, and it's not like we have a, a wealth of land that we can develop for commercials. Mm -hmm. So I think. Um, and one one thing I would just add is. Oh, one of the classes I went to for assessor school, there was a town, I won't mention the town, but they're sort of in central mass and they decided they were gonna do a split rate and they didn't have that much. Huh. And they switched and businesses left town like there was no tomorrow. <laughs> right. And it's really hard to go back. Right. It's really hard to recoup that. Once you make that decision, if you don't have a strong enough base to pay that burden, um, and people were just scared off, and then they have all these vacancies, and it, it was a disaster. Right. You know, and then you're left with gain, gain even less. Right. Right. And then you've got essentially 100% being supported by residential when the business. Right. So that it just kind of backfires if you don't have enough. Yep. Mr. So, Chair, I'd like to make a motion for a single rate. Second. Uh, for discussion. Okay. The reason that I asked for discussion is I think it's important on the, I guess it's the fifth, fourth or fifth page to basis break down those percentages again. We have less than 7% of all the assessed properties are commercial. We have less than 2% of all of the assessed properties are industrial. And we have less than 3% of all of the assessed value being in the personal property category. So like it or not, we're effectively an open space, single family or multifamily home community. Yep. That's where the taxes come from. And we make those decisions every year at town meeting when we carve out an APR piece or we set aside land or we embrace agriculture or, or, or. 
as you were saying earlier, we don't have a small industrial <coughs> park or right. you know, a nuclear power plant or a production plastics plant. We just don't have those things. So every year it comes down. I think the numbers, Flush. to echo Tom's point, the numbers are important to put out there. Yeah, 89, nearly 89% of the tax revenue comes from dwellings. Yep. Totally get it because that's the kind of community we've got. Exactly. That's what we've chosen to do <coughs> okay. over the years. So. Yep. I appreciate the opportunity for the discussion. Any more discussion? If not, there's a motion made and seconded for uh, establishing a single rate as opposed to a tiered rate. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Split rate. Aye. Uh, that'll be three to zero. And then the second, I'll entertain a motion for setting the rate. And that rate, as um, recommended by the assessors, is $15.44 a thousand. That's 11 cents a year, or in the case of the increase by percentage, 0.72%, that's less than a 1% increase in the property tax rate. Uh, motion. So can we set the tax rate right now? No. Well, it's we, pending approval of Department yeah, of Revenue. I mean, yeah. yeah. You it's can the, just... You know, accepting the recommendation is all of the motion is. Mm. Okay. They have to review everything. Yep. And, and it's established by the state after right, it's submitted. It's, yes. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 3-0, please. Okay. Thanks so much, assessors. Okay. Get your snow shovels out. <laughs> oh, jeez. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no. Marianne already knows. Look, she's, she's got, got her, her skis, skis, her skis, skis. Her skis. Yeah. scarves <laughs> ready to go. <laughs> I might point well, out she's that. She's going to go up uh, that hill unit. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. All the way to the All the way. All the way up our road. <laughs> Thanks just, so much, Teresa. I just pulled up the um, current inflation rate, too, just yeah. to see, and it's 1.7%, so it's pretty much in line with inflation in terms of the rate. So nice. I think uh, people need to kind of keep that in mind, too. Have a good holiday, guys. Thanks Thank so you. Much. You, too. And for those who are paying close attention, the legal notice was posted in the recorder and it is saying that we're having our hearing on the 4th at 6.30 in this office building. So, I uh, entertain a motion to close the hearing. Uh, motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, three to zero, please. Actually, that's for you. That's one to keep the town meeting. Absolutely. Yes. Okay, next up we've got minutes of the 21st. Motion made to folks in from the pod. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that was GAS night. Motions made and seconded for the minutes of the 21st. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero, please. And the second set of minutes now is the 28th, and that was our MVP workshop or our hazard mitigation uh, workshop mm -hmm. review uh, with uh, Alyssa from the COG. And her, I guess, her, physically speaking, her left hand, her left hand <laughs> band. So, yep. uh, motion. Uh, motion on those. Second. Motion is made and seconded in the minutes of the 28th. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That's three to zero, please. Okay. Uh, we'll go through select board updates at this point. David, anything? Um, well, yeah, it kind of hits the third bullet there. We, uh, the personnel committee okay. met last week yep. and, um, based on what we discussed in our select board meeting, we culled through all the candidates we had at the time, and um, we got one in since then, so we're gonna look and see if we wanna add that to the list, but we did come up with a list of five candidates. Okay. Um, maybe six, depending on the on the last one, and um, so I guess at this point we can start you know, scheduling our meetings and stuff. You wanna mash that, uh, mash that right into the third bullet right now, and that's the town administrator hiring, then we'll circle back to select board updates? Yeah. So we're going to get a recommendation from the personnel committee. Yep. Right, and they'll have that in a, f a form of a table or whatever. I gave it like I gave the the, the list. Okay. I didn't put it in priority order. I just wanted the list. Yeah, of, here's the, list. the five, and then I gave that um, to Cindy for the minutes. So okay. it'll be in there in minutes. So what's a prerogative of the board with respect to uh, next steps, including interview and timeline? Uh, I'd I'd like Cindy to schedule schedule. Uh, Interviews. Okay. Yeah. I think that we we should each submit uh, three questions. three or four questions, yep. um, and I I'd like to start I like to start the interviews. 
Okay. Yeah. So we'll put up sure. availabilities. Are there evenings uh, that are preferable, or does it matter based on the availability of the candidates? Yeah. I, I would try to get it done in the next couple weeks. couple weeks. Yeah. Okay. So let's put them out there and leave our calendars open, and we can always post. Again, these are public interviews. Right. So we can always simply post the meeting within 48 hours and then have that uh, have that schedule uh, laid out in front of us. So we'll begin that process as first available by the candidates that are recommended by the personnel committee. Correct. Very good. Okay, back to board updates. Tom, anything out there? All set. Thank you, Scott. Okay. Uh, a couple of, uh, there was a 120 North Main. Yeah, no, you're 120 North Main. You're Village Center. Uh, and both of those meetings uh, occurred last week. Updates with respect to um, the developer at 120 North Main. There was going to be an assessment of the, the architects wanted to get into the actual house this past week. I'm sure they have. And the update from the folks at RDI was about application timelines for uh, financing. They're, they're like speed rounds of state financing. And they're going to try. They don't expect necessarily to get in the first round. But if that's the case, it'll be pushed back uh, for the next round. Uh, the only tr challenge there is, of course, the longer you wait, the more expensive some things become. So that's an area of concern that was expressed by the folks at RDI. And I want to give them, again, credit for the transparency of their information that they could share. They did. And their process was very clear. And they're continuing to move forward. Also, the... Village Center Working Group met the same night, talked about some rotary plantings. We talked about School Street signage. What else was there? Oh, and then making, I think the theme of that night really was centered around how much uh, can the final product of North Main uh, be similar to the existing or current South product Main. of South Main for continuity's sake. And there was a lot of, a lot of robust discussion around that. And it's, it's, it makes perfect sense. So that's all. Uh, there was a frontier capital planning kickoff meeting, and we have another one now for the f in a couple of weeks with the chief procurement officer from the COG, and the s L the regional district wants to use the procurement officer from the COG so that there is uh, both a transparent process, but also it's not exactly an expertise they have right now for mm -hmm. capital capital work and purchase of services. So. Okay. I thought that was that was a fair discussion. So that was last week as well. Okay. So Frontier is going to use the cog. Frontier is going to use a cog for procurement uh, our, on capital. For the track project, anything that's big needs an RFQ and mm. specification mm. development. We have a new there's there's a new hire facilities director, and I my out of the dialogue it became clear that both the superintendent being the first round of setting up specifications wanted to make sure as well as the new buildings facilities manager wanted to make sure they wanted they wanted to be assured of missing any uh, traps so not falling into them so so are they going to have a project manager and a contract administrator also those would be project managing, depending on the project, would be built into the RFQ or mm. RFP. And two the, different things, though. Being a product, huh? Well, I mean, yeah. the, the I mean, I was just wondering who's going to manage the contract. That is so, the, sometimes the project manager sure. does it, but that not necessarily the best sure. person on a contract. That's not necessarily the best person. Sure. To, to manage the, the contract. The contract is more procurement based thing. I was just mm -hmm. wondering if they they were if they were gonna after going through the procurement process, are they gonna leave it with the COG or are they gonna let the COG do the contract management and they're gonna do the project? Sure. So we have a meeting with um and as a Andrea? She's the COG procurement. Mm -hmm. Uh, she's going to come down. That's at our next scheduled meeting for what the process is. Okay. So we'll get those answers. I wrote yep. that one down right here. Yep. But I, 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 it's just interesting, you know, because sometimes it just assumed that the project manager manages a contract. Right. But that not necessarily the sure. best way to do it. Good point. So I'll make sure to have that question in my uh, tickler to hmm. ask. Thank you, Scott. <clears throat> 
Okay, and that's it for, for me for updates. Okay. Public comment before we go on to correspondences? Yes. Um, Come on. So, okay. <laughs> it's all right. How are you tonight? I'm doing very well, thanks. Yeah. Justice Skibiski, 1.3 North Main. Um, the town of Sunderland has about four projects actively ongoing right now within a quarter mile radius of the town village center yep. and being on the um, town village center committee. Just wondering if these multiple departments that are involved or planning committees are talking to each other. You've got the school street project, um, you have the 120 North Main project, you have um, just the center of is the state going to put in a rotary, what are we mm -hmm. do for that intersection. Yep. And then also you have um, just Route 47 and North Main Street in general, adding a bike lane, um, redoing the road surface. So how are we ensuring that all these committees are talking to each other instead of a public forum? Or aside from me just coming out to meetings yeah. and <laughs> speaking my mind about it. It's all right, great point. So it's School Street, 120 North Main, plus North Main, yeah. right? And the intersection, those four all. And you're right, the physical impact area is pretty close and you wanna make sure that whatever overlapping challenges there are they're addressed early rather than late got it in project timelines too yeah um, in particular i know that they had some um, drilling rigs out in august at 120. Yep. i'd be interested to know what the soil sample or the bore um, holes uh, the results from that testing were yep. but just making sure their timelines uh, for that potential complex working out with the road yep. uh, if there's any drainage system impacts just making sure everyone's talking yep. to each other no, great point actually if you think about that one gantt chart or whatever whatever particular method right now showing the the four elements where would they end up being you know so we don't just start one thing nothing better than having a road resurfaced and in a month it gets cut up to do something right mm -hmm. yeah. a great point great point point. and i know Tom? we tried to get some tie into the what the state was doing at the intersection oh, too but Correct. you know but the their timeline's a little different for that um, one one twenty um, is is based on getting necessary money. Correct. So they're probably at least a year or two minimum of breaking ground. Yeah. yeah that's probably right. Um, on on the North Main Street project, we're supposed to be in the twenty twenty cycle. Correct. So I would see 21 the twenty one again. Yeah. So I would I would I would see that that starting sooner mm -hmm. than the 120 and the intersection roundabout 40 whatever we want to call it. Yep. That's not even on the state's that's not even in the quay yet. Yeah. Right. Although the state is sending out letters announcing that surveyors are coming out within the next 30 days yeah. to yeah. look around there, yeah. But that I mean if you're if we're not Unless we get some, uh, unless there's some with big horsepower, Dave Pierce. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, we're in trouble. <laughs> or FCAT. Or FCAT. Um, to make that happen, <laughs> I, I don't see that happening for quite a while. That's probably right. seven gonna, years yeah. out. Yeah. And plus, I don't see anything happen. The, er, the other thing that's not talked about, and, and it, it's a strange because the last time there was a, there's a lot of work done on Route 9 and the inter intersection in Northampton, Damon Road. Yep. Yep. There was a lot of stuff that, that, was, that was going on because a, a lot of traffic moved. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it moved off from Route 9 and it moved to other locations. Right. They have a major undertaking right now. They're, they're putting a, a humongous roundabout Correct. on right after the Coolidge Bridge onto 91. Plus new on-ramps, off-ramps. The whole thing. Yeah. I, I, I think, you know, that's probably, Baltazar is gonna probably be there for another three years. Yeah. I don't see them touching this intersection, right? How could they? The next area of focus for them is probably gonna be how they get the trains to stop cutting through traffic seven times a day. And, but that's a whole nother animal. Yeah. Anybody's ever tried to go up or down sure. Damon Road, it's like, okay, now it's all stopped. Oh, good. And plus, they have to go through public hearings. There's a lot of oh, yeah. a lot of steps in the process. So, so I guess what I'm trying to say is I, I don't see the intersection. I well, a I guess we we could get everybody to update that we got that um, we didn't say that that uh, the they're, they're going to add a left turn arrow northbound northbound on 47. Correct. 
Um, nice. And yeah, and that's a little. Yeah, that, yeah. well, that's that's supposed to happen before the first um, of the year. before before the first of the year. Yeah. So yeah. we were just notified of that the latter part uh, latter part of last last week. Right. So that's that's going to happen. Um, I, I I still think that they're 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 working on the timing of the lights. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I have noticed that it hasn't maybe been as bad on North and South Main Street, but the traffic heading west on 116 is now backed up pretty consistently mm -hmm. back to the GO 10, mm -hmm. um, pretty consistently from 3 o'clock to 5.30, 6 o'clock. And that, but that's been going from there, and it's been going up to the intersection on Sugarloaf Street, right. and then getting on to... Five and just 10. getting to the intersection so yeah. I, I still think that they have to do something with their sequencing of time you know times right there also but because yeah, we asked them to look at doing it like it is on the intersection of nine and mm -hmm. uh, 47 yeah I, I, I yeah I, I, I suggested that and I suggested that in in um, what's your name you know that old town administrator we had, Cherry. <laughs> yeah, a bunch name. of us have made you that suggestion. Know, it's, it's only been two way weeks. Back up, yeah. Way back two <laughs> weeks ago. But but Sherry sent an email, and, and I, I asked her to send an email specifically about that, about mm -hmm. the timing like is sim similar to what, what they do in Hadley, but that didn't get out, go over very well, I guess. So I, I, I don't, I, so I don't know if we, unfortunately, I don't know how that, Gantt chart would look Scott. Yeah, no, I, I think if, if I could to uh, Jessica's point mm -hmm. it might make sense to simply have the one big, you know it doesn't have to necessarily be on, on the, the, the stand, but it can be something that's that big that has the list, the estimated time, right, yeah. so that we can we can kind of keep it in front of us we, we get, we're going to get caught up in budget season soon, it's going to, you know, things are going to start unfolding and then you get to the end of the year and go, ah crap when did that start so i mean it might i think i like the idea of saying here's a list of where they are here's their estimated start and completion dates you know right. and then check on them check on them and make sure that people who are working on appointed committees can look and say okay our time's coming right and mm -hmm. we got to make sure we've you know we're communicating with that project or that initiative. In the case of School Street, it's just an initiative. It's a design state right now. We don't even know yet. But at least if there's some cohesiveness because of the concentration in the area that we're fo that this is all focused in. And luckily, being a small town, there is a lot of overlap mm -hmm. between the individuals yeah. and, and things. So that does help a little bit. Which I'll, is good. I'll, I'll work with, I'll, I'll take that as part of a <clears> charge <throat> and put up something that's, you know, whiteboard size and says, here it is. Here we're going. So it's in front of us at all the time. It can be downstairs, either in the office or in the in the anteroom downstairs, where everybody can just walk in and go, "Oh, I came in. I came in to pay my taxes, and I looked at the board and went, huh. Right. Little project status right? board. I think that makes some sense. I appreciate that, and, and look for it, and we'll post its or Gantt format or whatever, something that's big enough to show where we're at by title and timeline. You bring it up to our meetings. So Put it in the right up there. Great. Anything else? No, that's it. Yeah. Easy. Thank you. Thanks so Thanks. much. Have a great night. Okay. Okay. Request to use funds. So, Sorry. Go so ahead, Tom. Are, how, how are you getting the date? Well, we can get the established date. So first, we'll talk to RDI, and we'll talk to CAJ, and we School Street is a piece that's in process. Yeah, we can get some milestone dates from them. I would think. That's going to be things like Apple will have categories, right? Do application, right? Initiation date, application date. In the case here, this is going to be based on complete streets or park, one or the other. That's yep. that's application. Mm -hmm. Once it's done, we know that we're at seven, nearing 75% design at uh, North Main. We can put that up there. We have it by project title. So are, are we expecting the 75% design shortly? Mm-hmm. We sent the we sent the authorization for the changes. Didn't didn't we have to have another? Are we gonna have another public hearing? Public hearing, public hearing yep. Yeah. And then we go to one hundred percent. Seventy five percent to submit. So so then we're not looking at start till twenty twenty one. I wouldn't think twenty twenty one. 
Yeah, they'll their initiation time is 2020. So contract design is complete. Contracts are you they know, start bid, getting bids are out. Right. All right. The paperwork starts in 2020 in earnest. Right. I would so, suspect what spring of 21. So do we do we need to follow does do we need to follow up with CHA on on deliverables? Uh, or do we they have, do they have the time frame? I'll uh, follow up with them. Call John or email John in the morning. I, I would. I was just. I, I. I think maybe. Maybe we. I guess what I was trying to say, Scott, is I think he, he needs to provide us a time. If we're going to put a time frame together, mm -hmm. he needs he to give us a time yeah, frame, yeah, exactly. right? Yep. All right. So CHA will do one. RDI is another. Yeah. Right. We can ask. We can ask DOT District Two. Just for a basic update, I think we have one correspondence from them, and mm -hmm. it sounds like the surveyors are going to be getting, they're going to do baseline survey work. Yeah. Um, and then this one here is all in our control. That's, that's, that's a visioning process right. and then an application, right? So that's something we can set goals on for the group that's working on it, but it would be goals at that point. Yep. They have to go through the process. Like the, the town administrator, whoever he or she is, is going to you know, be beginning that process, the application process, yep. searching right. out what rounds there are. But I think I, I appreciate bringing them up as a group saying it's a physical area. So let's look at the physical area with all of the impacts that are being discussed currently. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. And then. Okay. Village center. I keep saying town center, it's village center. Okay, excellent. Uh, school street signage, transportation fund, and complete streets. I think we got a green light for that, Sarah. The three locations. We have fifty nine oh two in complete streets. Uh, available money may not be applicable. The other was transportation. Sidewalk easement, ADA compliance. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, it's for design. Yep. And they're asking for $800. $800 for design and then transportation infrastructure would be the three signs, yep. 1205. So Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion for the expenditure of allowing the uh, Project to use 800 from uh, fund line item 5845 for the sign design mm -hmm. and 1205 from fund number 245 mm -hmm. for the fabrication of the signs. Okay, is there a second? Uh, second. All those in favor? All right. Aye. Three to zero, please. And we can get those moving forward. I can keep that classification one separate now. Uh, next one, we have a Maya grant application, and that's safety equipment. I think George has got it here for helmets and head protection for communications for bucket and groundwork users. And again, this is a Maya grant application. So we simply put it in and apply for it, and uh, we work well with Maya year in, year out. Uh, both our audits, uh, workplace safety practices, as well as our general facilities. Uh, have yielded a uh, wonderful point structure that's helped us with these kinds of grants. So uh, if our points line up correctly and there's, there, Maya is willing, then uh, this is something that they will likely grant us. And this is one good reason to go to Boston. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. Yep. Great point. Uh, is there a motion to accept? Motion. Uh, second. Motion is made and seconded. This is for a grant application. I'll have this signed by the it looks like signed by procurement and then chief municipal. So grant application by signature for 3344.07. And that's going to be for chainsaw, helmets, chaps, gloves, dust vests, integrated communication systems for people working in and around bucket trucks and on the ground and adjacent to each other in, in large, noisy places. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Three to zero, please. 
I guess we don't need a bucket truck self-rescue bailout kit yet. Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> Larger grant. <laughs> yeah. So speed control signs. We had uh, approval from MassDOT saying you could use Chapter 90 money for uh, interactive speed signs. Uh, we have a six thousand uh, dollar request. I'm um, six thousand. Uh, sorry, approval. Looks like forty nine eighty is what one costs. I'm sorry for two. Two. Yeah. yeah. Unit price is twenty four ninety. My apologies. Total is forty nine eighty. Uh, these are not mobile units, but they're uh, trans they're transferable. They're not going to be permanent installations anywhere. So you can move them around different parts of the town. And when we looked at the last round, uh, they had some that were. So 14 inch solar panels, 12 volt batteries, and 80 kW kits, mounts. And Dave, when we looked at these last time, they were awareness signs, but also could collect um, yeah, data. Collect some data on means, on 85th percentiles, on traffic counts. So we'll have to understand probably with the law enforcement, with the chief, about where does it where do we where do we amass that data right or yep, it's going to be how frequently does it get taken et cetera, et cetera. yeah i like i'd like to see like all the info on yep. that yeah because um i mean it, on the one hand it would it might replace having to have some traffic counts done right because we'll right. have live yep good point live data going on so okay so chapter 90 money used for this all those in favor all right aye Motion and second, right? Yes. Okay. Just checking. Okay. So we have the next is a green communities grant. So the grant was rolled up. The applications were sent. The grant was awarded based on elements uh, from audits. Uh, we have one hundred and eighty-two thousand five hundred and thirty-four thousand. Five hundred and thirty-four dollars and eighty-six cents. One eight two five three four point eight six, and this is a series of energy reductions at the elementary school, at the town, this building, town office building, the public library, and the public safety complex. And this, because again, we're missing a procurement officer right now, looking to sign. This is the authorization that'll be voted by the board, and then this. Application can be can be the PO can be cut and we can start. Design is complete. Grant round has been accepted. That's another you know if, if Sherry has a uh, a legacy, it's going to be in and around these areas. Here we go again, another uh, you know green communities bit, and we're getting one hundred eighty two thousand and six basically one eight two six in measures paid for through a combination of utility incentives as well as state grant. And that does simply drives down our energy usage, plain and simple. Yep. That's a good thing. Lower overall costs going Correct. forward. Any discussion? And, and I, I just be remiss in saying that part of the being able to qualify these grants because Sunland is a green community. Mm-hmm. Great point. If we so, didn't do it, we wouldn't be able to, yeah. Well, I, I and I mean we had a, a hearty discussion about when it was when we first right. had the Put conversation. Um and this was one of the reasons why we wanted to do it, one of the key ones. Yeah, and, and I, I mean this this grants for hundred eighty two thousand, but I mean we have gotten what this is our third. Yeah, we got one for what three hundred and yep. something thousand dollars and another one. So we're, we're probably close to $3 million on just grants, uh, three quarters of a million just on grants right. for a green community. So. And that is energy envelope. I'm sorry. That is building envelopes, lighting, like controls, right? street lights. Yep. You know, you, we, we haven't had been, we, we see the warrants, but a lot of people don't see the warrants. Obviously, uh, we haven't had a street light bill since the conversion at all, which is the energy offset has been such that I know energy is being consumed, but what we're putting in through the PV system into the grid, offsetting that, we used to spend, I've, I've, I don't want to quote the number wrong, 13 plus thousand dollars a year just on streetlights. Yep. 
We haven't had a streetlight bill since the conversion. Just none. We, we get a credit. It just keeps coming back as a credit every month. <laughs> That's good stuff. But, uh, and, and, and again, it, it, was a, it was a good discussion to have about mm -hmm. green communities. Correct. Um, and and we, we, the town on the whole, has benefited by the process. In, in, in particular, when you look at um, street lights. Yep. It, it's, I mean, A, we get better light. Yeah, there's that. It's a better light. Yeah. Um, it's more it's more an efficient light. Mm -hmm. So now we're using, what, 13 watts of energy versus okay. 250 watts of energy yeah. or more, 500 watts at some places. Mm -hmm. um, and as far, I, I just think it's, when you, when you, if you look at the upgrades in, the public safety and and sometimes we, we lose track right. is that the public safety building is now pushing what 10 years 15 years of age. Been, uh, 20 year bond on the on the on the uh, library is done next year so so while it's a new library right. it's right. 20 yeah. it's 20 years it's old the new library. and and the library 18. trustees and the building committee they did a great job on their original mm -hmm. fixtures mm -hmm. um, but 20-year-old technology is 20-year-old technology. If you have a 20-year-old refrigerator in your house, mm -hmm. you probably need to go to one of the local stores and get a new one because yep. you're going to save in electricity. You, you'll pay for that new refrigerator. That being said, the same thing you're going to find out in the uh, in the library. Mm -hmm. And they, this is the second round of the library. They did the building automation system to be right. a green communities last over the last 18 months. Yeah. So there and there's a lot of stuff and. Some people may not know or forgot, but they heat the library with geothermal. Correct. Yeah, it's all electric building. So one of those that that know that the uh, um, when you're looking at climate change, not because of the Sunland Public Library. That is what people are striving for. And the grant writing was something we took into account with vetting candidates for the position too oh, because that's an important and whoever steps in there has got some big shoes to fill in that respect so good point good point okay um, I, I think it's up, it's up to the board to also the whatever our titles this month um, it's been whatever. A, yeah. but <laughs> of, of prioritizing <laughs> that in in to make and and I and, and again I, I think one of the one, one of the advantages that we've been using Sherry took great advantages of the FERCOG. The FERCOG has done um, great work making making known what what grants are available and, and working with us to get it done. So and frankly aligning the town with, with availability. It wasn't um, you know it wasn't five years ago we weren't we weren't eligible for park grants. Right. Mm. Yep. Right, so you end up with an open space plan. You do the you do the kind of the, the the governance work, right? You do the committee work. You meet and you meet and you meet and you meet and you put a plan together and you, and you go. Much like a housing plan, right? right? Same situation. You meet and you meet. Our housing plan is now being updated for the second time. Yeah, we didn't have one. And we didn't have one, so right. that's good stuff. It makes you eligible for things, but that's you can't just say, "Why well, I want to do that." Our first hurdle is your el eligibility. Yep. Yeah. The process. Okay. Uh, so, is there a motion to authorize authorize signature for this purchase motion. order? Second. Motion is made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Three to zero, please. Okay. Uh, we've been notified by the police uh, association that our, th our three-year, our triennial uh, negotiation is is about to to begin. And they were looking to set up dates uh, to begin that process. I'd, I'd like to express, I'd like the, to express a concern about pursuing that at this stage without a town administrator in that it takes that kind of focus to understand the nitty gritty of the contract itself. Yeah. And having negotiated the last three, I think it's important to have that person in the room with uh, whoever the board's uh, representative and the chief is. Right. 
because again, you want to understand the contract, you want to understand what direction, uh, what areas of negotiation you're looking towards. The association does the very same thing. And the reason I asked this to be put on the agenda was to sign a, uh, send a letter, a response back to, in this case here, Officer Scoble, uh, recognizing that we have, we have your request, but we'd like to have a town administrator in place to, before we begin the process. And at least they have the correspondence out there. Yep, that makes perfect sense. Well, the last three contracts that we've negotiated have been done um, without town council present. Correct. And I've, I've I've been very collaborative. Mm -hmm. Right. So we, we have we have an option. Mm -hmm. And and either we start negotiations now with a lawyer mm -hmm. involved, or we wait to hire a town administrator. Fair. I'd rather do the town administrator, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but if if I mean if they find some overwhelming reason to get it done now, we could start with a lawyer. Sure. sure. I think it complicates things, yep. but. It does set a tone. Mm -hmm. It does, yep. and and I I don't I don't I I think the collaborative the way we've been doing it has been an excellent way of doing it, Scott. Um, if if I just you know if you have to we it, you know we send a letter to them, but if right. they if they absolutely have to start now, right. which is the earliest we've ever started, mm -hmm. then we we can, but right. it would be with a lawyer, right. and I don't think that would be that would help us. Good point. So the letter's pretty clear. It reads, acknowledge receipt of your request to begin negotiations. Select board is currently recruiting for a town administrator position. We'll begin interview soon. Therefore, we respectfully request negotiations begin after the town administrator position has been filled. Thanks in advance for your consideration. It's pretty, pretty straightforward, straightforward response. Yep. And they've got it down on the record. To your point, Tom, having the attorneys in the room, I don't know how many, four, four contracts ago, it'll be 12 plus years now, 12 years or so. Yeah. Well, I agree. Uh, but I, I, I would say that that's an option. Right. I, I don't think it's a great option, but right. it's an option. Right. I, I'd rather not do that, Scott. That's what I'm saying. Yep. But if, if they insist that we... We can actually take and, that and, step. And, and, you, and somebody may ask why. Well, we, we're governed by the open meet the, the open meeting law in the state of Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. That was what does that mean? That means that Scott, David and I can't can't sit around and discuss the police contract unless we're in a open meeting. Mm -hmm. I guess we could say that we could go into executive session, but it's a very cumbersome thing. Right. Um, and and it's advantageous for whoever the, the one that's in part of the, is to have the town administrator and the attorney there mm -hmm. to ensure that things are said and sure. there's a procedure to, to make things happen. So, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to be the one selectman sitting on a negotiating team like right. that. Maybe it's a good point. So, and I guess that's I would like. So, if you want to send this letter, I I make a motion that we send this letter. Yep. Second. Okay. So it's downstairs for signature. Motion is made and seconded, and I appreciate. Uh, the union uh, sending notice, and you're so you're right. It's 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 four months plus before anything is even supposed to start. But at least they're starting. Right. And and I don't that's, have, And again, we don't have a problem with that. Correct. It, it's just that it, right now it's not a good. It, it's it it it. I it would put whoever our representative is on that in a, a whole thing too because of the, and I believe in history is a is a great thing, mm -hmm. especially in contracts. I think that's. In the public sector, not having continuity in contracts is a, is a bad thing. Right, that's a good point. Um, but but I I I I want to wait until the the representative of this board could sit down with the union with with somebody else at the table with them. Okay, so a motion is made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero, please. The one thing I forgot to mention under updates, uh, Tom, you want to talk about the fire department? Our, our three graduates of the academy. Um. Yes, we, we um, Tim, Josh, and John just uh, they had um, they just graduated uh, Sunday from the 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 call and volunteer firefighting school. 
it the when you the, and this is this speaks to their commitment it's it the class the classwork or the the trip to Boston uh, Springfield was 240 hours worth of work um, that was done on nights and weekends to, so just just that is 240 hours for that just class time never mind all the other study time that they put into Correct. it um, and and basically it's it's the same it's the same schooling that regular or I guess they call them uh, career path firefighter. They, they don't call them, they're just called career path. Career path. Right. career path firefighters undertake. It's just that these volunteers and call fighters are doing it on their own time. Mm -hmm. they're typically um, Saturday, Sundays, and, and, and evenings during the right. week. Um, so they did put 240 hours in. Um, they just... Three, three from Sunderland graduated. I think there was 26 total that graduated. Um, and I, I, I did send the, uh, the chief uh, an email and asked uh, if he, that we as a board would appreciate if um, he would bring his three newest graduates to a meeting so we could introduce them to the town. Sure. Yeah. And so I'm waiting a uh, response from Steve about that. But it's a it's a big thing. Um, and for them to make that commitment, you know, they make a commitment and they, they chose to serve their, um, to give back to their neighbors and family in a way that uh, speaks volume about their commitment to the, to, the, uh, to the community that they live in. So congratulations to the Sunland Fire Department for the, Three new members that just graduated from the uh, firefighting academy. Yeah, that's great stuff. You know, I mentioned the the truck as well. I guess it's getting closer to being done. <laughs> it's it's red <laughs> and, and gray and gray. <laughs> um, and supposedly it's it's getting near its final. It's getting time for its final inspection. Um, and then it should be making its way east for um, sometime in December. Integration in, integration into the Sunderland Fire Department. Nice. So and we did the last the truck. one of our last meetings, signed the bond authorization, and uh, did choose a five year buy down on that. So we'll be able to see that as we heard tonight from the assessors. That's incorporated into the tax rate as it stands. So. And I think I, I think the five years are a good good amount of time. I mean, if you look like if you look at capital projects and you look, I mean, you look for a return of investment of three to five years. So, right. Right. now it's good stuff. Put a bow around that for Christmas. Merry Christmas. There you go. Yeah. Big red bow. Well, right. Exactly. Big red I bow. Guess, I guess I guess I guess a jolly old fella will be riding the fire truck, <laughs> a new fire truck yeah. this year. <laughs> It'll be on parade a lot. Let's hope it. <laughs> let's hope it doesn't get much use. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Exactly. I hope um, it never has to leave that house. Exactly right. Only for parades. Only uh, one parade. other one other note for an, an updates, and I apologize for missing it. Uh, the community was given uh, an award from uh, Stavros for its accessibility at the Riverside Park, and uh, that's a fine piece of work from a very very um, how do I put it? A, a very engaged nonprofit. Stavros, which spends a lot of energy and effort making sure accessibility um, is ensured for people with, with uh, needs. And I think that's great. So we've got a number of emails and correspondences about how much people have been enjoying that. Yep. So, yep. so thank you, Stavros, and thanks for everybody who worked on that. That will be downstairs in the enter room. People can come and look at it. Okay. We're off on Veterans Day. Originally, we had, a, I think it was electronically listed of our meeting was on the, on the 11th. It's actually not. Watch for our meetings to pop up as this interview process goes along. And I would like to have a scheduled for the 12th just because as we have more things to sign and vote on signing. Yeah. Uh, so this is the 18th on Monday. I'd like to correct that and make sure that we're available November 12th. 
that's a Tuesday. What do you think, FCAT? We can do it. All right. Okay, anything else to cover tonight? We have signatures downstairs. If not, is there a motion to adjourn? Uh, motion. Second. We have a motion made and seconded to adjourn. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. You can call us out at 732.